do a little bit of introduction. Meet somebody for, for the first time, even if you have met that person before. Tell him or her your name. Praise the Lord. Come down a bit. We give God all the praise. Let's be on our feet. We are going to read together the book of Exodus chapter 13. From verse 15 to verse 22. Our topic this morning is season of reward. We are still in the season of reward. I told you the convention has ended, but the season will never end. The season that we are. If somebody asks you, what season are you now? You say, I'm in the season of reward. What season are you now? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. You didn't answer my question. What? The only evangelist Christian answered, I am in the season of reward. What season are you right now? Yes, I'm in the season of reward. Amen. Exodus chapter 13. Let's go there. Verse 15 to verse 22. We are going to read together. Who is, who is using fan now? You are sweating. Maybe you should go to the fan. Uh -huh. Abby? Let him go to the fan. Maybe you should come to the where there is no fan. Face him with the fan. <laughs> if you are sweating in this kind of weather, maybe you should be in, the, in Canada. He said amen. Or in Joss. Joss is also cold. Uh, why would you say amen to Canada and not amen to Joss? At least it's heat matter. Go to Joss. Canada. <laughs> oh, God of mercy. Nigerians. Okay, let's read our Bible. Exodus 13, 15 to 22. I'll read verse 15. You read verse 16 till we get to verse 22. And it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all males that open the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. Now you will read verse 16. Let's go. It shall be a sign on your hair, hand and your frontlets between your eyes. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt. I'll read verse 17. It shall be a, Okay, we are still in 16. Show me verse 17. Thank you. Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had, had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near. Can you see that at times, that something is taking time to reach you does not mean God does not have a plan. God said, if I, took them, if I take them to the shortcut, it is nearer to where I have promised them. But they will find wars on the way and they will run back. So at times, if God is taking a longer route, eh, it's for your sake. So tell your neighbor, don't be discouraged. So I read on, I read on. Okay? Although that was near, for God said, least perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to, to Egypt. Verse 18. Now, that's your own verse, sorry. Let's go. So, God led the people around by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. I read verse 19. That's my verse. That's my verse. Verse 19. I read, And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Now you read verse 20. That's your own verse. Let's go. Verse 20. Let's go. So they took their journey from Sukkot and camped in Itam at the edge of the wilderness. 
I read verse 21. You will now read 22. That's the last verse this morning. Let's go. And the Lord, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. Now let's read 22 together. The last verse before we take our seats. Let's go. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not be stranded. Amen. Take your seats in his presence because God did not take the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. God was always leading them. He gave them clarity at night. Still come down a little bit. He gave them clarity at night and gave them direction by day. And I pray for you, you will not be tired. No matter how hard you work, the Lord will make your work productive. It's like you are coming back to Nigeria. <laughs> oh, you don't want to find a game. Okay, praise the Lord. So, back to what we are saying. You know, uh, the message I will be sharing with you was not actually what I prepared to share with you today. Yesterday, I prepared a message in my notes. But I was sleeping in my dreams and I had God speaking this scripture to my ears. In my, in my dream, I was just hearing it. And as he was hearing, he was explaining. And the voice that was explaining told me, go to church this morning. This is what my people need now. Go to church this morning. This is what my people need now. You know, and I stood up around 4 a.m., quickly rushed to the sitting room and went to document it down in order not to miss anyone. You know, I have always told you that your pen and biro is, um, can store and keep information very well than your brain. So don't, when God gives you certain inspirations, don't just leave it in your brain. Uh, I always think, tell songwriters, at times you may be driving, you may be walking on the road and God will just give you an inspiration. Thank God for technology. Now, pick your phone. Quickly record it. That song that hit the crowd, that hit the whole world, Baba Kuishew Baba, that was sung by Mommy Bolare. She said she was walking at Okibola beside St. Jesus. She was just going on the road when she had that voice. A trumpeter was bl blowing on her ears and they were singing. And she was looking around. He would not sing Corrie. He said the trumpet was just shouting, Baba Kuishew Baba Kuishew Kuishew. So she said she quickly branched somewhere, took pen and, you know, and started writing. And you know that that song took her all over the world. So don't joke with uh, you documenting whatever God is giving you. Write it down. If you can record, record it. Because the human brain cannot keep information more than paper and pen. Last week too, I saw what, when God showed me the picture of the church we are going to build you know, at Liberty Road in 2004. I saw it. I did a little bit of drawing. I wrote down some of the things. Uh, the project is a very massive one. I saw that uh, when I saw it, I wrote it down that there's a car park under the church. I know the engineer will know that that one is massive. Have you? Uh -huh. That people will be driving in to park under the church. I wrote it. I saw the, 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 uh, the jotter. I had forgotten. I had forgotten. If I had not seen it, it would have built something else. And I saw it. I said, wow, 2004, I saw it. It's going to come to pass in the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at what we have this morning. The topic remains season of reward. See, I'm still in the season of reward. Now, if you look at what happened here, the first thing I want us to understand is this. Every one of us reward cannot be the same because our needs are not the same. Everybody's reward cannot be the same. So if you look at the scripture here that we read, the reward of the Israelites that they needed as at that time was freedom from bondage. You know, that was their choice. I wrote down freedom from slave masters was the reward that God gave Israel in the verse we've just read. They were divinely freed from Pharaoh. The king that made life difficult for them. Now, when people are sharing testimonies, we just had Evangelist Kunle's testimony this morning that they chose him as uh, to, to give him a word among the uh, his uh, 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 the officers. Yes, among the officers 
he was, his name was Peaked. And they gave him their word last week. He said he was here praying during the convention for reward. Not knowing that a meeting was on in Ogun State. They were looking for the officer that they were going to choose. And they chose him. Now, everybody's reward cannot be the same. Some people may be trusting God for fruit of the womb. That's why when somebody is talking about a promotion, your own may not be promotion, your own may be expansion. Am I communicating? So understand clearly what you want. Understand clearly. That's the first thing I want us to establish in our heart. Just like he visited Anna and Sarah in their area of need, God visits us. When he wants to reward, he rewards us by visiting us in our area of need. There are some things I will tell you this morning. So you just be expectant. You know your own area of need. Some people are trusting God for miracle of the fruit of the womb. Some are trusting God for marriage. Some are trusting God for a job. Some are trusting God for international open doors. Some are trusting God for healing. Some people are trusting God for land. Some are trusting God. They have land already. Lord, I trust you to build. You know, some are, we are, our, our area of need varies. I want us to understand that. But God, when he said to give out reward, I want you to know that he will meet everybody in the, the area of need. Look at this scripture, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. I want to show you something about the God you serve. I want to show you something about the God you serve in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. 6, 10, not 10, 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Look at this. The Bible says for God is not, it's not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. I love this. God does not forget what you have done for him. I want you to know that he has not forgotten. I want you to know that he has... Don't ever think that all your giving, your seeds, your sacrifice, your commitment is lost. It's not lost. When God is set to visit you, he will visit you with the answer of your choice. Because we all don't have the same area of need. But what I want us to see today is, why does God distribute reward? He need it all on Shiman Kmiri, you know. Why does God distribute reward? These are the three things he wants me to show you so that your heart can be prepared for what he wants to do. Why does God distribute reward? Number one, he gives reward to us, his children, to make us happy. That's the first reason. When God is said to give reward, he is doing it because he wants to make us, his children, to be happy. So when we talk about season of reward, God is saying, I distribute reward, not just because it is plenty over there, I don't have anything to do with it. Oh, he distributes reward in order to make us happy. God is interested in our joy. I come again. God is interested in our joy. He know a lot of do see I your wa. He know I do kalayo. And I don't know that thing that will make you happy. Before the end of this year, God will visit you with it. This is a season of reward. Look at what he did for this man in Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3 and verse 6 to verse 11. Acts chapter 3, 6 to 11. A man who sat at a beautiful gate, but his life was ugly. The Bible says this man could neither walk nor stand. He couldn't stand, he couldn't walk. I will show, I want us to read it. And this particular day, he sat at the entrance, as usual, Uwulusha man toro, and saying to somebody, God will make you happy. The miracle that will make you happy will happen to you this season. The Bible says then Peter said, you are begging for money, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Let's move on. You will now see what happened to the man. And you will see what the man did later. So he, okay, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now, that's the miracle. But look at the purpose of the miracle. So he, limping up and stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. That's the purpose of the miracle. 
He was walking. He was, we stop at verse 11. He was limping. He was praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Everybody saw him. He was just singing praise. It is your turn to sing praise. I say it is your turn to sing praise. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging. Arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Look at verse 11. They were all marveling. Ah, they were marveling. They were surprised. They were looking at him. Is this the man? He's not. Now, as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, and all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's greatly amazed. God gives miracles. He comes with visitation because he wants us, his children, to be happy. I don't know why God is sending me with this message this morning. I don't know who is there. Everybody is looking at your face that it is shining and smiling. But inside your heart, you are not happy. Inside of your, your heart, you are feeling bad. But God said I should come and tell you. That the reason why he wants to visit you is because he wants you to be happy. That's the message. Why will he give us reward? He gives us reward to make our heart glad. God wants to make somebody happy. Who is that person? I am part of them. I know. I know because this is not the message I plan to preach. But for him to have sent me, the message is for somebody. Listen, I wrote here. Our joy is a priority to God. Our joy is a priority. That's why I stopped thinking that uh, somebody will say, what concerns God about me getting married? Uh -uh. Upon all the problems of the earth. What concerns God about me getting married? Yes, God is a big God. God is a great God. But God is interested in the joy of his people people that's why the bible says in his right hand there's fullness of joy in the presence of god fullness right hand play us forever i will tell you two stories from the bible the first one is a story that happened to a woman whose son died and the bible calls her a, a widow her husband was already dead and the only boy the only male in her life was her son and the boy died and they were carrying at him, carrying this boy, where? To the place to go and bury him. They wanted to go bury him. Let's go bury him. Let's go bury him. And as they were going, the Bible says people were, you know how people cry when young person, a young person dies. The mother was crying. It was the tears of the mother that, that attracted Jesus, not the fate of the mother. If you are to talk about faith, the woman didn't have any faith. They were going to bury the boy. But it was his, her tears. Jesus was, come. he felt that compassion. Why will a woman be crying like this? I don't know that area of your life that you are crying. If I be a man of God, sent with this word of God, to you, before the end of this same month, you will rejoice. Amen. I say you will rejoice. Amen. I'm not saying next month, or before the end of this month of August, 2023 i say you will rejoice Amen. the bible says jesus just went by the woman didn't call him just went by and touched the coffin and told them stop and they stopped and he said to them put the cups down he didn't ask for any permission he didn't ask what is the boy's name he didn't ask what happened how long did he die you know what he was just interested in I need to stop these tears. People are crying. I don't want it to continue. In whatever area of your life that you are crying in your heart, you are crying in the secret, the Lord God will intervene for you. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, he looked at the boy. He told them, open the coffin. They opened. And he touched the boy. And told the boy, get up as he got up for you to understand how happy god is for you to be happy he took the boy and gave it the boy to the mother that was crying that thing that you don't have that you lack that is making you to cry is coming to you i say it's coming to you i say it's coming to you understand it that's why one of the reasons he gives reward he gives reward because he wants us his children to be happy. Another case too, this one did not invite him. They call his name blind man Bartimaeus. The Bible says the man was born blind. I've been near for you. 
In fact, it is a for Juni. Kolujurara. As they were passing, you find that in the book of John chapter 9. As they were passing, the Bible says, and the disciples said, Master, Master. It was the disciples that called Jesus. Master, Master, Master. Can you see this man? He was created without eyes. And to them, they believe that anybody whose condition is like that is because there's a generational cause. So they said, who sinned? Is it the father that sinned or this man? Who sinned? And Jesus said, he, was, he didn't sin. His father didn't sin. His mother didn't sin. But he was created this way so that God's name will be glorified through him. And Jesus, the Bible says, looked at the young man, picked up mud, spite into it, formed eyes. That's a creative miracle. And put in the eyes of the man. You know? And that man, he told the man, go wash your eyes. The man went to wash his eyes and returned seeing. I want to pray for somebody. If there's any part of your organ that is damaged, maybe they have told you that where well, there is no solution in this area, there's no solution. That even you yourself know that there is no solution. Ah, the God that created the heavens and the earth will make you enjoy what we call a creative miracle. This year, in the name of Jesus. Hear you the voice of the Lord. This month it shall happen for you. I said this month it shall happen for you. Your testimony will shake everyone. In the name of Jesus. Sit down. He gives us reward because our joy is his priority. He do not know any it do no any yo. It is his priority that we should continue to rejoice. Or have you even forgotten that man at the pool of Bethsaida? Remember his case. That man too didn't call Jesus. He didn't even know Jesus. The man will always try to be forced. Go forced to I'm speaking to somebody here. Otik be your Jew. You were going to question only your Jew me by. Uluwaran me see God said I should tell. He has sent me to you. This is your season of breakthrough. There will be a sudden visitation for you. Fire. Within 90 days, 3 months, that we turn your life around for good. Go and write it down. That's what I heard. The Bible says the man sat there trying to be forced. He couldn't. Jesus came to him. You know why? Because he wanted him to be happy. And said, young man, young man, arise and walk. The man says, sir, the miracle is inside the pool. Every single time I try to get there, somebody gets here ahead of me. Look at what he was told. Rise up and walk. He said, the miracle is inside the pool. You know, at times, if problem stays too long, it turns the person to dance. You want to just, you, do, you don't have the right answer for anything that just comes your way. And Jesus said to him, rise up. Pick up your mat. My friend, go home. You don't need the pool. The pool has come to you. And the man stood up. He picked up his mat. And like joke, everybody saw him going home. Do you know why? God wants us to be happy. That's why God is telling me to tell somebody, stop crying. Your miracle is on the way. That's the reason for reward. If not, that there is no need for reward. Israel danced out of Egypt. They danced out of slavery. They danced out of slavery. They danced. They were dancing. All this prophesying and prophesying is here. I wrote it down here in my notes. Because he told me here, prophesy on their lives. And he told me what to prophesy. They were dancing. And God was happy as they were dancing and going. So the number one reason why God gives reward is because he wants us his children to be happy he wants to make us happy number two second reason why god gives reward 
He gives us reward to shame and to silence our mockers, in bracket, our enemies. He gives us reward to shame and to silence our mockers. Yes, I some people are talking. Some people are laughing. Some people are spreading evil reports, making jests of you. You don't have their answer. You walk all the down alone. If you think you have their answer, you are wasting your time. Oh, listen, won't let no. It is only God that can answer them. Do you know that it happened to Nehemiah? Let me show you. Nehemiah chapter 4 from verse 1. That's why try not to answer your mockers. Try not to answer those making jests of you. You know what you should do? When they make jests of you, turn to your rewarder. This was what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah chapter 4. Be very, very fast. I don't have all the time. From verse 1 to verse 7. You turn to your, mark, mark, your, your maker and you say, my maker, please answer them. Ulu ami jodam alone. When God is said to, gi to give you reward, Nehemiah 4 from verse 1, He will give you the, the reward that will silence your mockers. Now look at this. But it so happened when Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. He mocked us. He made jests of us. Look at the mockery in verse 2. We'll stop at verse 7. He mentioned the mockery. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews ah, doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burned, you know, that they are speaking are ill words against you and what you are doing even laughing at you move on verse 3 they didn't stop oh. but you will see the prayer that Nehemiah prayed now Tobiah the Ammonites was beside him and he said whatever they build if even a fox goes on it what will happen it will break down their stone walls uh, rubbish you know the way they mock but look at what Nehemiah did. Say after me. Let's read together. One, two, three. Let's go. Hear our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them a, a, as plunder to a land of captivity. Let God hear. Oh Lord, hear them. Hear what they are saying. And did God respond in, in verse 5? Let's move on. Listen. Do not cover their iniquities and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you. For they have provoked you to anger before the builders. But when God came with reward, so did we did what? So we built the wall. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The blessing of God that we silence all that are mocking you, all those that are laughing at you. Before the end of this year, the Lord will display it. In your life, the Lord will display it. I, I pray your provokers will not prevail at last. <laughs> I say they will not prevail. Your mockers will not laugh at last. In the name of Jesus, your results will silence them. The remembrance of God will shut their mouths. Sit down. Look at it. it says, so we built the wall. And the entire wall was joined together to have its height. For the people had a mind to work. In verse 7 where I'm going to stop, the people had a mind to work. We built. Now it happened. When Sambalat, when Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashtodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored. Eh? One man is that's why hear me when people mock you don't let them mock you out of continuous movement you know some of the mistakes some of you make when you, you, you open your ears you listen to mockers you now stop moving forward don't let them stop you moving forward you say look at him look at her you know when you hear words like that it should steer you up to move on these people moved on. The people show me that scripture. We're not true. The people walked with, with serious hands because these people were mocking them. They kept moving. 
Now it happened. When, now we have read that. And they heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed that they became very angry. Don't allow yourself to stop. There is nothing good you plan to do that some people will not laugh at you. I was telling my wife, was it not yesterday? Yesterday, now if you remember, I said, I wonder how we look those days when we're getting married. She was 23, I was 26. When God told us to go into marriage, from our family side, they were laughing. From my family side, they were laughing. Ah, this girl and this boy. And it's true, we look like girl and boy. And there was no support. Every, some people were standing as, in fact, from our families, they came as guests. As they came to look, some of them were only shirts. They didn't even talk in with trousers. I feel like we wedding here, me see at the pastor. Ah, you know, but they were shocked. Father Dolan Hall, that sat 800 people, was filled to capacity. Do our own Jeff Our aim was to get married, not to feed the people. Sincerely speaking, it got to a point when they came to me, some of the ushers came, Papa, Papa. Rice 120 pack la makwa kilo shele. Yeah, okay, tiku is alert. Money kilo coming. She wants to party join reception line. She timbati law and tio baje. We say to come me. We have achieved our aim. But thank God today. Thank God that I had the voice of God and I obeyed. Assume I didn't obey. I allowed the voice of mockers to stop me. I wouldn't have gotten to this point. I'm telling you the fact. God gives reward in order to silence our mockers. I wrote here, do you think God doesn't hear the wicked things that the mockers are saying? He, he, he hears. Listen to my reading, beloved. The same way the coming of Samuel silenced Penina for life, God will give you the Samuel that will silence the Penina's that are mocking you in the name of Jesus. Listen. Listen. Stop thinking. I wrote here. Stop thinking. It is not your thinking that will solve it. It is a miracle of God. Coming in form of Samuel. That can stop Penina from talking. That's why. Hear me. God is set. For him to call it season of reward. It means he wants to silence some mockers. You just get yourself prepared. For what God is going to do. Number three. He told me to tell you. <laughs> God gives reward. To prove that he is God. Not for any other reason. But to just prove that he is God. Now listen. I told us. Number one to make us happy. Number two to silence the mockers. Number three. God said I can decide to give a reward. Not because of anything. But just to prove that. I am God. And there is nothing anybody can do about it. You know, one thing with me is that anything God tells me, I want to confirm from scripture. Lord, give me a scripture for it. And God showed me Isaiah 45 verse 3. Look at Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3. Now, in this kind of reward, sir, your faith is not needed. In this kind of reward, your righteousness is not checked. God just wants to say, Now, and such reward, Ha. Ha. Me, my pray for Look at this. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. Amen. Amen. And hidden riches of the secret places. Amen. Amen. That you may know that what? I, the Lord, who call you by your name, I am the God of Israel. Not because you prayed for it. Not because you have faith for it. Not because of anything. You have anything. You have anything. You have anything. Jekin ri owo re o baba Jekin ri owo re o baba Ah hey hey Moni Jekin ri owo re o baba Jekin ri owo re o baba Ni tori awon to rowo re Aye won yi pada Awon to rowo re he said, I want you, Father. Check in, re, oh, worry, oh, Baba. A mitty day, ha, ha. Mo fellow, worry, oh, oh, oh. Mo ti day, 
mo fe rowo re o o ba pa mi lerin asikoto o baba pa mi lerin asikoto o baba ani e ba pa mi lerin asikoto o olorun mi meta lo kan pa mi lerin asikoto o you know what god told me this morning he said son you have not seen this kind of miracle I say yes, I've never seen it. Have you seen a miracle before? Somebody is building a house that you didn't know about and it's for you. Now, God now reminded me the testimony of Reverend Kotila with that lady he met in Lagos. Tell my daughter to give me wedding date. And she said, Lord, next year. And God said, tell her that she will be married before the end of the year. And what month were they? October. Ah, the lady, he said the lady didn't say amen. Why? Because she had a courtship about her And she, he said, you don't forget, I don't forget things. It's, and the lady, he said, he stored the number with the lady that will not say amen. And the brother showed up December 2. They got married December 27. There are some things that God will just do just to show that I'm still God. <laughs> Look at the days of Abacha when Abacha signed the death warrant of Dia and Co. They were to kill them the second day morning. Abacha died in the night. I don't know whether Tell Magazine still exists. I follow the story with on Tell Magazine. As Mustafa heard that Abacha was dead, he, 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 he got into his vehicle very early in the morning to go and execute Dia and others. But some people have heard we were told from Tel Maxine, he was driving in when the vehicle that took those men out were driving out. As they saw his vehicle, they said they told all of them, lie down! And as he signed in to the prison, they were signing out. He got there and said, where are they? Tell him! Tell him! Bucha de o baba, hey, ninu a ye mi o, o wakwe mi non le ni o, koli mi duri a kwe se. There are certain, God said to me, I, I, I distribute reward at times, just to prove me, I am God. That's why, at times when God does it, you'll be looking at the person, ah, ah, ah. Somebody sang one song. I want to remember that song. Okay. You go and find us, look for that song. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, I want to see a Okay. Such me, even you yourself will be asking people, Lua, any yoke that you to me. That's why I always tell people the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Time and chance. That's why I'm praying for somebody. This season, Jehovah Almighty will make time and chance to favor you. I say time and chance will favor you. Ha, Sagada Baskele. 
I wrote here, we, saw, we see such miracle in the feeding of 5,000 in the wilderness. The people didn't ask for food. The people didn't even know that food was coming. They didn't know the mixing that was on. The only thing they had is, please everybody sit down in group of 50s. Do we like dream? Yes. These people are in the spirit. That was the same miracle that happened to Elizabeth that made her to go and hide herself. Moloyu. Thank you. Elizabeth went to hide and said, I'm alone. You. Are you sure? Show you me. Because she was already old. And the Bible says she hid herself six months. How will she explain? God said, Son, do you know I did? In fact, Eli, God beat me because you know I'm a teacher of the world. A teacher will always want to show you what you have done to get what you, what you, are, what you are. And principles you must follow. But this one is principleless. God said, I just want to come and show that I am God. That was the kind of testimony that Pastor Adeboye shared. That he was traveling. The express was very narrow. The bridge, yes, was very narrow. And his car was on high speed. Not knowing another car showed up. Trailer showed up. He could not, the driver could not slam the brake. And when they crossed, vroom, he said, he told the man, park. They went to check the size. The road, the bridge could not contain two vehicles at the same time, side by side. God just wants to prove that he is God. Let me give you two minutes to quickly pray. Lord, prove in my life that you are God. I don't know how it will happen. Lord, share me. I don't know what you need one area of your life. Lord, I want you to show that you are God. Shall we begin to pray? Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Father, show in my life that you are God. That you are God. I want to know more that you are God. I want the world to hear my testimony and know that you are God. Just show it in my life, Lord. Ah, ya gada bada bada bas, reke de bosende, shagada bas, perform the glorious miracle in my life, Lord, that will show that you are God. I want to see it, Lord. Ya gada bada bas, reke de bose, shagada bada bas kene, basata yanga da bara, reka da basada yara, raka da ba, leke de bose, shagada bara, basede. Are you praying for yourself? Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. 
Baba Fagda Ra Re Baba Fagda Ra Re Yengede Basene Baba Fagda Ra Re Ah Baba Ki Gogo Hara Ye Lek Bada Juwikbe Jesu Nikalaba Lori Aye Gogo Baba Fagda Ra Re Muni Baba Fagara Reho Lingaraba Baba Fagara Reho Ninu Haye Mio Baba Fagara Reho Yenge de Basen Rebos Baba Fagara Reho Nito Rigbe Kigobo Haraye Le Monda Jubibe Jesu ni koloba lori aye gbogbo baba fagbara re o agbara re gaju tota lo o imo re gaju ti sulo ah agbara re gaju tota lo balege de barebos Ima rega jute jula Ni tori oloru ko she unti Ni a O sho a ye ko le di olona Ishe re A je a ye ko le di olona Ishe re A gara rega jute jula Begin to pray Show yourself Lord Shakada bara 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 bas. Ah, tete wa she ya nureu. Baba wa she ya nure. Ah, oloru alag bara ayeti lero bole shema. Baba wa she ya. Begin to tell the Lord. Show yourself as God over situation in my life. Ah, sagada bada 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 bas, shagada bada bada bas, lege de boso, ringada bada bas. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Sit down. He will show himself. Amen. Let me summarize. It's a message I've come to deliver. You know what God said to me here? He said at such times, when God gives you a miracle to prove that he's God, you won't have the capacity to trust God naturally for such miracle. You just like as, I'm, as I am now, there are some things I cannot pray about. I can't say I'm trusting God now uh, that God should give me uh, a normal jeep. Me, faith in me will be. Because faith in me God will maintain it. There are some things we don't have cap we don't have capacity to ask God. But when God wants to prove that he is God. Hmm, he will just show up. And you'll be wondering. Let me close with this testimony. How we became biological parents. Because of the way we, we, we used our, our, our bodies for Jesus. We fasted to the point that the church where we were raised, fasting, one of the one of the battle, one of the My wife fasted till she was no longer seen her menstruation as a woman again. So we got married. She was not getting pregnant. We went to the hospital. Somebody told us to go to the hospital. They said if they don't find her monthly flow, there's no how they can even know her ovulation season. When she got pregnant, sir, ma. We went to the same hospital because we didn't know she was pregnant. She was just throwing up. And the doctor said, sir, 
you know, she's on treatment to regulate her menstruation. So she didn't think, the doctor didn't think of pregnancy. They started treating malaria. After treating malaria, they saw that the symptoms didn't reduce. They started treating, treating typhoid. It got to a point, the doctor said, oh, no, sir, she's not changing. The sickness, the temperature is there. The vomiting, the doctor says, sir, we have given her serious antibiotics. It will take time to work. Let's hold on. Doctor said, okay, come back in so and so months' time. That three months that we went, even she herself they didn't know that she's pregnant. Too. <sighs> Doctor said, you are still feeling all those things. Say yes. Let's even do scan. Let's see what is troubling you in that stomach. As he put the machine, doctor screamed. Pastor, your wife is pregnant. You didn't tell me. And we are giving her all these serious antibiotics. I said, but you are the one that said she cannot be pregnant. Why will you now say she's pregnant? I, I, I know she's pregnant. I didn't tell you. You told her that she cannot be pregnant. And I was there when you were saying it. Doctor, what do you mean? He said she's pregnant too. Pastor, come and see. But to be sure, let's give her another one month. Ma 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 Madam, uh, ma uh, uh, Pastor, Mrs., don't take anything again. One month time that we got it, doctor said, okay, let's check. Kogba wo scan lo wo. Ta fi bi omo ya. Scan ta shi alin 60. Doctor yon gbo wo. Because wun gong, wun mo ke wun. O gun ya ye ko ti kobo mo ya. As he checked, he said, Pastor, come and see the head of your baby. I want to release you with it, but this is the condition he gave me. Let me read it to you. Where am I? Listen, the battle of life will continue to arise because we have a stubborn, a very stubborn enemy who never gives up. This is why we should never allow any present testimony hinder us from our continuous commitment to God. Now, what is the key? Continue to serve him. Did you hear me? Continue to serve him. Whether he has done it or not. Because he's on his way with reward. That will make you know that he's God. That's why that songwriter said, Nikba toba te wa You are the most Nikba tiyo te wa You are the most You must Wait, I'm not singing. You must be continuous in your service. Don't stop. It is service that provokes reward. Whether the result is there or it's not yet there. I didn't say the result is not there. It's not yet there. Continue to serve him. But know that these are the three reasons why he comes to this reward. Number one, to make you happy. Number two, to silence your mockers. And number three, to prove that he is God. Rise up on your feet.